Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about 10 romance books that have amazing banter in them. I adore romance books that have A plus banter in them, okay? I have two recommendation videos that I've already made for this down below. You can go check them out if you haven't watched them yet. So this is part three. I adore, adore amazing banter and romances, so I'm about to gush about these 10 books. We have some contemporary in here. I know a few fantasy, an alien one, and even a historical one. So let's get started. First, I have Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. This is a staple. If you are new to the romance genre or really want to read a good staple romance, this is definitely one you should pick up. This is the romance, obviously, between Josh and Hazel. They knew each other in college. Hazel had a little bit of crush on Josh, but Josh never really saw her in that light. Um, but it's years later, and the two of them end up bumping into each other again, and they kind of help each other. They set each other up on dates. However, by the end of the night, they never finish the night or like end the date with the person they were set up with. They always kind of like end up with each other, like hanging out with each other at home or have a meal together after their date because their dates ended up being so horrible, they end up being with each other afterward. And so this is a friends to lovers romance between the two of them where they're technically not dating because they're setting each other up with other people. These two are so funny. <laughs> Their banter relationship in here is one where it's not enemies to lovers. It's more friends to lovers poke at you, make fun with you. Like I adored that aspect in here. Both of them are so funny and hilarious and great, amazing friends. And I just adored this one. I feel like this is a staple friends to lovers romance that more people need to read. Next I have Tomboy by Avery Flynn. It says this is book number three in a series, but you can definitely read it as a standalone. The like main commonality in here is that each of the heroes in this series are hockey players on the team, the Ice Knights. Um, so our hero in here, Zach Blackburn, is kind of like the uh, player grump. Like he's like, kind of like the meanie, kind of puts on like a mean face kind of dude for the team. So her heroine here, she is a nurse or a doctor. I can't remember off the top of my head. She works in the medical field. Um, and so the Ice Knights uh, PR manager just so happens to be best friends with our heroine. And she's like, hey, okay, so this guy on the team, his name is Zach. He's kind of like a grump and he doesn't want to go to the doctor. He's being very stubborn. So how about um, like, I'll pay you just like go over to his house for him um, and go take care of him at his home. And she's like, oh, uh, okay fine. Yeah, you're my best friend. I'll do it, obviously. Um, and so she goes to his house and takes care of him and he's very grumpy about it. Their banter right off the bat is so good. Like banter sometimes can just make me giggle and smile and blush and this couple definitely had that. After she gets him all situated and done and like checks him out and everything, she tries to like get out of the home, like leave, but then paparazzi, cause he's famous, paparazzi end up taking pictures of her leaving his home and things kind of go sideways after that. And so they kind of have to like fake date, like fake be together for um, other reasons when you read about in the book uh, to gain more uh, like media influence. I really enjoyed this one. And Avery Flynn is an author I definitely need to read more of. And I feel like she's such an underrated contemporary romance author. One that I love, that's another one that is so underhyped is The Truth About Cowboys by Lisa Renee Jones. Every time I see this cover, I like swoon and I blush like, I love this man, okay? <laughs> Our hero in here used to be a pro baseball player. Uh, some things happened in his family to where he had to quit unexpectedly and help his family back at his Texas hometown on the ranch there. So it's been a little while since he stopped playing and our heroine in here needs a break from her normal scenery, her normal job. And so she decides to rent a cabin on this ranch in Texas. On her way there, her car ends up getting stuck in the mud on the side of the road in the rain. The guy, the hero, ends up, he's very grumpy. <laughs> and their relationship, again, right off the bat, very, very, very banter-esque. It's enemies to lovers, this romance is, or I don't like you, you annoy me to lovers. But he ends up helping her nonetheless and gets her on her merry way. And she is in for shock when she realizes that the hero in this book is the same man who um, helped her with her car, owns the ranch that she's gonna be staying on. It's filled with an amazing setting. I love a good ranch setting, um, a good cowboy. Um, he's also trying to get back into baseball. And so you have a good sports element in here as well. And then amazing family. Um, the hero's grandmother in here plays like a pivotal role in their romance and I adored her. She was so sweet. Um, but their banter in here made this romance. I 
I, I loved it. I love them. Next I have Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is another case where the bantering relationship is um, more sweet and like friend-like, you know, you're bantering with your friend. Not that they're like only friends. I just mean like there's different forms of bantering. There's kind of like the enemies to lovers poke at you, um, like make fun of you bantering. And then there's the like kind of like more friendship joking around bantering, you know? If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, Zenny is a marriage of convenience romance. Zenny in here ends up inheriting, I believe her great aunt's like estate and some other, like some money from her. But there's like a stipulation in the will that she has to marry this guy named Mason who used to take care and help and hang out with her aunt. They lived in like the same small town. And um, <laughs> the two of them are very shocked when they realize that this is in the will. And so Mason can't get any money either because He's in the will also. And so the two of them get married and then they become friends and then it turns into lovers. It's very cute and very sweet. I just love the progression of their romance. I love me a good friends to lovers, especially when there's a good a marriage alliance or arranged marriage or marriage and convenience thrown in there. Like I adore that. It adds another element of forced proximity in there as well, which is a trope that I adore. These two were just so sweet and Zenny is hilarious. I love her. I just love the progression of this romance so much and I need more people to read it. Next I have Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark, the first book in the Brutal Birthright series. This is a mafia romance series if you did not know. This is the romance between Ada and Callum. I think it's Age Gap if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, they're from two rivaling mafia families. Um, I believe Griffin is from the Irish mafia and Ada's from the Italian mafia. Anyway, Ada and her brothers end up figuring out that like Callum's sister's having like a birthday party or something at their estate, at their house, and they decide to like crash the party. And then Ada accidentally, while she's like sneaking around their house, ends up accidentally setting fire to like the drapes in the study or the library or something. And Callum kind of like runs after her. Things happen between the two of them. He's not very happy with her. She's not very happy with him. And things just kind of blow up into a little disaster between the two of them. And their families, their parents are not happy about this whole situation. They're like, okay, we need to figure out a solution so our families don't go at war. Like we just need to figure this out. So the solution is to marry Ada and Callum, make them get married with each other. Um, so that can also have their families aligned. Both of them are not happy about this situation, but they have to do what like their parents deem them to do like this. Th there's benefits to them getting married that they realize, uh, but they're not happy about the situation. Like this is very banter, like banter in a point where like threats to kill you bantering. <laughs> like it's definitely enemies to lovers in here. There's even a point in here where um Ada realizes that Callum is allergic to strawberries. And so what kind of like lip gloss does she decide to wear on her wedding day? strawberry lip gloss and so what happens when he kisses her when they get married that's something good it's not good <laughs> it's also a relationship where the bantering lasts even throughout with the point when they become lovers like their bantering is throughout the entire book and i adore that i really love romances where the bantering is throughout the entire romance because that just adds like that keeps like a amazing spark to the relationship I feel like. Next I have Always Only You by uh, Chloe Liza, the second book in the Bergman Brothers series. This is another one where it's like more of a sweet friends bantering. This is the romance between Frankie and Ren. So Ren right here, he is a hockey player on a very famous hockey team and Frankie, the kind of like PR social media manager for the hockey team. Ren has been pining after Frankie for years and is just waiting for a time when he knows that she's ready for a relationship because Frankie has alluded to the fact that like she's not dating, not looking to date at all. Frankie in here, I love her. Uh, she has RA, rheumatoid arthritis, and she is autistic. And at the beginning of this book, her house ends up getting broken into and it's not a safe place for her to stay at while they're trying to fix all the windows and the door. And so Ren offers his place up and she's gonna go stay with him. And so there's a forced proximity aspect in here and it gets a little uh, complicated when some things happen in their forced proximity-ness in their forced proximity relationship here um, and Ren's feelings. You know, and then Frankie is starting to realize that she also has feelings for Ren. This is definitely like friends to lovers that the bantering in here was so sweet and added like a fun element to their relationship. Like they had so much fun together and you could totally see that. And like the way that they talked together, the way that they interacted with each other, the way that they hung out, like I love 
this couple so much. An alien romance one that I'd love to mention is Adiron by Ruby Dixon. This is one of her books in the Corsair Brothers series. Um, this is a series about some brothers who are space pirates. So these three brothers end up realizing that there's this long lost spaceship that a bunch of people have been looking for. It has apparently like a bunch of wealth on there, like a bunch of treasure. And people have been trying to find this lost spaceship for quite a long time. They end up finding the coordinate. They end up finding out where this spaceship is. They go and find it and realize that the treasure on here that's worth a lot of money are human slaves. <laughs> and uh, they are not, they are not. They're like, oh no, we are not into that. No, 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 that's not gonna happen. So they really want to get all these women to safety. However, when uh, they get on the spaceship to come and like rescue and get to know the women, um, the women think that like these aliens are bad. All they've known since they've been abducted from earth is bad aliens who will do bad things to you. So um, when the aliens first get on the spaceship, they try and kind of like seduce and woo them into a certain room in this ship. They end up locking them in the room and kind of like gas bombing it to knock all of them out. <laughs> and so Adiron, he ends up seeing Jade there, who's one of the human women. And the moment that he sees her, he is totally obsessed with her. He's like, you are the most stunning woman I've ever seen in my life. I want you. And then it gets even better in his brain when he like sees her through the window when he's getting knocked out with gas. And he's like, this woman is perfect. This woman is gonna be for me. I I'm totally into her. And then he passes out. I love that scene so much. I think about it all the time. Adiron definitely has the more like, I feel like banter-ness to him. Um, Jade is a little bit more stoic and a little bit um, hesitant to be in a relationship like that or even uh, not 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 be serious because she's experienced a lot when it comes to aliens and so Adiron just loves to add a little bit of fun to the relationship help Jade see that life is not serious all the time and she can have fun once in a while man does she take his advice to heart and they end up falling for each other and Adiron is just like such a goofball and a character that I can just smile about all day long. Another Ruby Dixon one that I love to mention is Bound to the Battle God, which is her first book in the Aspect and Anchor series. This is her fantasy romance series that is so underhyped. If you want a good slow burn fantasy romance, you gotta pick this one up. And this is one of my favorite bantering relationships because these two do not get along whatsoever at the beginning of this book. So our heroine in here, she is from our world. She's from Earth, but she ends up getting sucked through a portal um, like in her like neighbor's closet or something like that and gets put into this fantasy world. And this fantasy world, it's kind of like the Greek gods and goddesses where there's like gods, deities up in the sky and they have like a certain element to them that people worship. Uh, so Aaron is the uh, hero in this book and he's kind of like the war god, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember. There's also like the father of the gods, kind of like Zeus, and he's not very happy with his children. So he ends up uh, casting out all of his uh, godly children into the mortal plane. And in order for these gods to live on the mortal plane, they have to be linked to a mortal on the mortal realm. And there's like even some stipulations and rules when it comes to the mortal and everything like if you get too far away from your mortal or from the god or whatever like if there's a lot of distance between the two of you it would be physically painful for y'all to be apart from each other so anyway by some happenstance our heroine here ends up becoming the anchor to this very arrogant god and so she does not like him at all at first and they have to go on this journey in this trek so he can go back to the godly plane and then she can find out how to get home back to earth. Um, but then on their trek, obviously they fall in love. This one is definitely a slow burn romance, but if you want an amazing fantasy, fantasy romance, you need to pick this one up. And the bantering in here, top notch. Like you have a chatterbox woman who speaks her mind with this arrogant, <laughs> arrogant man who thinks the world revolves around him because he's a god. But don't worry, he gets knocked down many pegs by the heroine, you know? <laughs> um, so this is one I definitely, definitely need more people to read. Another fantasy romance is Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. This is a witchy romance. Also, I love, I love, I need to read more witch romances. This is the romance between Jeline and Azarion. So in this fantasy world, you have the empire who rules over this giant chunk of land. Once a year, the empire ends up forcing one woman from every village in the empire to be sacrificed at the stake in front of everybody in the empire once a year, which is horrible. The empire is not good. The empress is poo poo head. No, we don't like her. So with the heroine near Jeline, she actually has fire magic and magic in the empire is strictly forbidden. You will be 
beheaded. Like you will be put to death if people find out that you are magical. She also has this ability to glamour herself and disguise herself as a different person. Um, so for the past, I think five years, she has been disguising herself as a new person and offering herself up as the tribute that year over year. So someone in her village doesn't actually die every year because she has fire powers. She's able to live through being burned at the stake. So she ends up being brought to the empire and Azarion is a, what are they called? Gladiators. Yes. Okay. So Azarian in here is a gladiator slave. He's been a gladiator slave for many years. And he is the first person to realize, to like look past Jolene's glamour and realize this woman has been here before. This woman has magical powers. Like he is so intrigued by her. And then he's like, this woman can, can, can get me out of this. She can help me. I'm going to force her to help me. And so he ends up kidnapping her and taking her back to his village where he's supposed to be the ruler of, where he was betrayed from. He was betrayed by someone and someone took his place on the throne of where he's from. So he thinks that because of her magical powers, she can help him get back on his throne. This is very much enemy to lovers. He freaking kidnaps her, for goodness sake. And they're just poking at each other and bantering and screaming at each other the entire time he has her kidnapped. <laughs> Grace Raven does amazing banter. There's, I feel like, amazing banter also in Radiance, um, but that one's more of it like friends to lovers, like sweet bantering. This one is definitely I hate you bantering. <laughs> And the historical romance that I have for this list is Do You Want to Start a Scandal by Tessa Dare. This is the romance between Charlotte and Pierce. So they're both at this like house party. Charlotte's there for obvious reasons. She's just there to attend a house party. Pierce, however, has ulterior motives. He's actually a spy and he's there at this house party for specific reasons. Pierce and Charlotte end up like chatting one day in this room, kind of like bantering with each other. Um, they're getting on each other's nerves. <laughs> And uh, this couple ends up coming in, not knowing that there's someone, two other people in the room, and they end up doing stuff in the room. And people can overhear what this couple is doing in the room, but they think that it is Piers and Charlotte. And uh, Piers is forced to kind of like save Charlotte by offering to be her fiance. But Charlotte's making it a goal to figure out who the actual couple is who was in the room with them. So uh, she does not have to marry Piers because she does not want to be married. Um, but then they obviously end up falling in love. Their romance was very sweet. I really loved it. And their very intimate relationship was something that was so amazing to read about. It was so entertaining. Anyway, so we have it. Those were 10 romance books with amazing banter in them. If you want even more recommendations, be sure to check out the other two great banter recommendation videos I have linked down below. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the, um, like the kissy face emoji. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you soon in my next one. Bye all.